Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Well, we have a very exciting parsha this Shabbat. And um, I think at this point, many of you know the famous story of the talking donkey that tried to stop Bilam from cursing the Israelites. Yes, raise your hand if you know this story. I know you know it. Now, if you look in all the commentary, they actually spell out Baal. Baal, but it's Bill on. And Wendy, I think, has a child that's named that once. He came up to me and said, yeah, yeah, got to say Bill on. <laughs> so I want you to know that if you actually look at the Hebrew, it is Bill on. So when we do this Parsha, what we get to find out is that instead of going to curse the Israelites, which is something that Bill on wanted to do, he uh, gives forth prayers, prayers of blessing, standing up high on the hill, looking down at the Israelites in their encampment. And that prayer is what? Ma tovu. We sing it on Saturday mornings, we sing it in the morning service. Words of blessing rather than words of curse. Rabbi Avi Weiss has a commentary which explores the concept of free will and our power to choose. In it, he states, God allows us to make bad decisions. Anyone out here ever feel like you've ever made a bad decision? Bil'am received permission from God to go with Balak, the king of Moab, to the Jewish people, even though he wanted to curse them. That is not what God wanted. God originally refused his request, and then the text states, the anger of the Lord was kindled. It was only after Bill um, brazenly asked again, did God consent? The Midrash says that we can learn that a person is led down the path he chooses to go. From the beginning, Bill Am um was told, thou shalt not go. But when he stubbornly asked to go a second time, God agreed. Nonetheless, as soon as he went, God says, villain, I desire not the destruction of the wicked. But since you are bent on going to your own destruction, rise up and go. At times, we can be our own worst enemies. Have you ever felt that? Rabbi Weiss goes on to speak of how the Midrash highlights several key concepts. While no one can impose limitations upon God, God can impose limitations upon him or herself. For example, God stepping back and allowing people the freedom to choose. Not every choice a human being makes pleases God. God was angry with Bilam for choosing to go to the Jewish people with the intent of cursing them. And yet, even when confronted by the angel who intended to stop Bilam, his inner desire was to go, so much so that even God would not stop him from traveling the path that he had chosen. God helps those who choose to do good, but for one who chooses to sin is also permitted at times to take that path. Evil displeases the Almighty, but evil does happen in the world, doesn't it? If God always intervened and prevented evil from occurring, human beings would cease being human, as they would lose their freedom of choice. When creating humankind, God's will was to allow people to act out their own desires, even if those actions run contrary to God's wishes. This, of course, does not mean that God is uninvolved. God cares very deeply about everything, everything that happens. God allows Bilam to go, even as the text says he sheds tears over his decision. So we are now approaching the High Holy Days. Hard to believe, but it's right around the corner. And we appeal to God as a Vinu Malkenu, our father, our king. Parents don't like to see their children stumble, falter, fall, but without so doing, knowing they will never learn to walk, let alone run. Accomplishment and character comes from conquering adversity and learning from our mistakes. It is through our mistakes that we evolve and grow, if we learn from them. 
God doesn't want us to choose sin or evil paths of destruction. He or she created us to live in the garden full of light and promise. We, with our free will and our humanity, create obstacles for ourselves, but in the end, they are opportunities for growth. As we say in our liturgy, God loves the coming. It is our free will that sets the stage for multiple layers of learning that affects us all. God would prefer we choose the path of righteousness, but we are human and sometimes our ego and our humanity gets in the way. What starts out as a curse instead can then become a blessing. How many times in your life have you embarked upon something feeling cursed, but then later on you were able to look back upon it and say, oh, you know what? That was a blessing in disguise. Has anyone ever experienced that? Our job is to look at what we perceive as blessings and curses and focus on the positive. Turn that which seems negative into a constructive way to grow and then flip the narrative. That is our task. That is our path. Just like there is yin and yang, there are two sides to every coin. The key is how we flip it. Look for the good even when there is bad. Search for the blessing to be had in whatever comes our way, and then turn the curses into blessings. Choose righteousness and hope that God will be with us and paying attention. On this Shabbat, and as we move toward our days of awe and repentance, let us start that process of reflection. There is so much awry in our world, it is more important now than ever to try to find the silver lining in every situation. If you look, it is there. It may sometimes be hard to see, hard to feel, and may even take years to reveal the lesson learned so that the blessing can be found. Our job is to do it, reach for the blessing, especially when we feel most cursed. And remember, whatever we are dealing with, it could always be worse. Our stuff is our stuff. Better to deal with our own than somebody else's. Ma tovu ohalecha Yaakov mishkinotecha Yisrael. How goodly are your tents, O Jacob, your dwelling places, O Yisrael. May we know goodness, may we know blessing. May the moments in which we feel cursed be few, only enough to grow, and may the process be as kind as possible. May we choose paths of righteousness, and may God be with us through the good and the bad, making sure that the curse becomes the blessing. Kemi may it be God's will. Shabbat Shalom.